bring us agenda item 16, which is Alabama Way. Mark, you can have a presentation, please. Thank you, through you, Chair. This application is the resubmission of an application that was refused by the Planning Committee in July 2014. This current application seeks permission for the construction of an offshore, onshore office and warehouse facility with pontoon to serve as marine operations and maintenance facility for offshore projects and seeks to address the previous sole reason for refusal relating to residential impact. The application site is allocated in the unitary development plan as being for primary industrial use. The starting point for any application is the development plan and as such the use of this site for light industrial purposes in connection with the uses being applied for is in keeping with the development plan. The wider context of the site is also made up of industrial and commercial uses in keeping with the land allocations for this area with the sole exception of residential development known as Priory Wharf immediately adjacent to the site at its northern perimeter. The proximity of the proposals to that residential development formed the Council's only reason for refusal when an earlier application was considered by the Planning Committee seven months ago in July 2014. With the exception of changes to the proposal which seek to address that reason for refusal, uh, which I'll come to shortly, all other aspects of the proposed development remain substantially the same. Those matters were considered previously by the committee but did not form any basis for refusal. However, to briefly revisit those matters and to assure the committee that these issues have been properly considered again, um, I would make the following comments. In terms of the potential for the loss of public open space, this site is not designated either formally or informally as such. Its present use is as a car park and its land use allocation, as previously mentioned, is within the primary industrial area. The walkway down to Woodside around Priory Wharf will remain open to public access. There are also a considerable number of viewing locations along the waterfront where events on the river could be viewed and access to the promenade will remain with the exception of a small portion along the front of the application site below the existing car park. The loss of the car park itself is not considered to warrant a refusal of planning permission as other locations for parking are available and income derived from this car park suggests a very low level of use between two and three cars a day over the last four years. The closure of the short section of waterfront uh, of the proposed development in front of the proposed development will not impact, impinge on guided historic walks as this section of the promenade is already closed to public access due to it being gated off at the adjoining commercial property. That part of the historic route and circular trail along the perimeter of Priory Wharf to Woodside and beyond will be maintained. Much has been made in relation to the historical context of the site and the proposals have been carefully considered by English Heritage, who confirm they have no objections to the proposals. The site is not subject to statutory protection in terms of it being designated as a scheduled monument. English Heritage have confirmed that it would not be possible for them to make a case for scheduling as the site does not meet their key criteria for doing so. Indeed, it is English Heritage's view that any early features of the site prior to its use as a car park are likely to have either been swept away or obscured by the later formation of the built embankments or the wider industrialisation of the area. The site is also sufficiently separated from Birkenhead Priory, some 400 metres plus to the south, um, to have no impact on this Grade 1 listed building, with a number of industrial and commercial uses present between the site and the Priory. As previously outlined, none of these matters which were reported and considered by the Planning Committee only seven months ago formed the Council's reason for refusal for the last application. All of these matters have again been properly considered and the development proposed would not impact on these issues sufficiently to warrant a reason for refusal. Turning then to the earlier reason for refusal and the potential impact that the early proposals were considered to have on residential amenity for the occupiers of Priory Wharf, um, namely by virtue of noise, general disturbance and poor outlook. 
This application seeks to address that reason for refusal by removing roof lights from the western and northwestern roof pitches in order to reduce light pollution towards Priory Wharf. The new proposals also relocate the pedestrian door on the north elevation of the warehouse to the eastern side of the building, again directing the potential for any noise disturbance away from Priory Wharf. Elevational changes have also been made so that 10 metres of glazing along the northern and western elevations break up what was previously a stark overbearing elevation. The glazing at this point is also non-light emitting. The proposals also allow for the introduction of evergreen screen that would give rise to the effect of a green or natural living wall. This would further minimise the impact of a stark and bland industrial elevation as previously proposed. Additional landscaping and tree planting along the site boundaries secured by condition would further assist in softening the impact of the development. Uh, the ridge height of the, of the, uh, the proposed building has also been lowered um, so the, the, roof, uh, the roof gradients aren't as steep. A detailed noise assessment has also been undertaken and appraised on behalf of the council. That assessment considers noise to be kept to a minimum. No manufacturing will take place uh, at the site and general use of the warehouse is restricted by condition uh, between 8am and 6pm. An assessment of noise from the jetty has also been undertaken and concluded that again there will be no significant disturbance caused to near nearby residents due to the infrequency of its use, the short duration of noise at this point, and having regard to existing ambient background noise already in existence from the river uh, and other maritime uses. The proposed development will not feature heavy industrial use or manufacturing, but will consist of light industrial use by way of offices and warehousing. The changes that have been secured, together with a more detailed and thorough assessment of potential noise disturbance, are considered to be acceptable and overcome the previous reason for refusal. The proposals seek to bring highly skilled, long-term employment to Birkenhead, contributing positively to the Wirral's investment strategy, the local economy and the borough's skills base. The proposals will not have an adverse impact on adjacent businesses or other nearby industrial and or commercial uses. Access and highway arrangements to the site are all considered to be acceptable. The proposals have been screened for environmental impact assessment, with impacts arising from these proposals considered to be low. The proposals have also been screened against the habitat regulations, again with impacts being considered to be low and within accepted levels. The use of the site at present is uncontrolled and unconditioned. It is, it is considered that the proposals represent an opportunity to add some control over the use of the site and hours of operation that do, not pre that do not currently exist. The proposals provide the opportunity for new employment in the area, promoting sustainable communities and economic development. <coughs> As previously considered, the proposals would not harm the historic environment, but a condition is proposed for an archaeological watching brief during development. The site is located within the primarily industrial area, an area within which uses such as the proposed development should be directed. It is considered that the new proposals are sufficient to overcome the previous reasons for refusal and weigh in favour of the development being approved this time. If members are minded to approve this revised application, it is proposed to amend condition 8 um, to read as follows. The scope of the decommissioning method statement shall be agreed in writing with the local planning authority and prior to any decommissioning taking place um, and will be informed by standard environmental management methods in place at the time and shall include but not be restricted to the following. Timing of works to avoid overwintering wintering periods, details of method statements including the adoption of least intrusive methods for the intertidal marine structures and methods to minimise crushing and noise. Um, it's also proposed to add a further condition, uh, which would be condition 19, that would read, no development shall commence until details of a noise attenuation scheme has been submitted to and approved in writing by the local planning authority. 
The development hereby permitted shall be implemented and thereafter operated in accordance with the approved details. The application is recommended for approval. Three petitions of objection have been received, containing a total of 176 signatures. A petition of support containing 710 signatures has also been received, and representations have been made by local board councillors. Do we have um, the lead petitioners here against the application? Are we having one person to speak, or are we having three people to speak? Three people. Okay. Um, have you decided on the order of who's coming first? Mm -hmm. If you can decide amongst yourselves, and the first person can come to the front here, please. Two parts. 
one of which it says that there should be no adverse effect on neighbouring businesses. That will not be the case. My company has three quarters of a million pounds worth of internet servers in our building adjacent to the wall, to the fence. We cannot leave those servers there during building operations due to the vibration and dust which will inevitably be a result. So we will have to move those computers. We will move them to our Newbury office. Along with those computers, we will have to transfer 10 of our staff who support that network for our international operations. We're not a small company. We are operating on all the continents of this world. So if the computers go to Newbury, there's no point in bringing them back. That means we'll migrate the whole of the company down south to Newbury. This will be a loss of 50 jobs to Google. These are jobs which average over £70,000 per annum in wages. They're not negligible jobs. So that's the first point. The second point, as I mentioned last time, we were planning to expand. We bought an extra component of our building in order to expand a software test laboratory. It's the first that will be in Britain. It's a new development and a new concept that the government is um, pushing forward. We are in a unique position to exploit that. So you've got the contrast between our company, which is modern, very high tech, active all over the world, against the interests of a company like Hamel Meds, which, let's face it, has been bankrupt once before, and is dependent almost wholly on government handouts, which could change, for instance, next May. The second companies which are going to be affected adversely are the charter boats. And they've been picking up and putting down passengers on that slipway for years. In fact, that's one of the key things that's been going on there for 800 years. And despite the fact that the council officers say that it's forbidden, there's not a single sign up there in any way indicating that this is forbidden activity. There is a gate. But it's a step over gate. I know that because I've stepped over it. It's very simple. Everybody just steps over it and uses the slip line. And I've taken legal advice on this, and it's very unlikely that the council will be able to stop those people doing that operation. The second part of EM6 is loss of public amenity. And a lot has been said about that. It was mentioned that English heritage are not interested in the site. Which is interesting because I have with me an email from Dr. Marion Varta, who did the original survey for English heritage on the Priory. She did dug the footings out and so on. And she is very concerned about this development. She thinks that that Monk's Ferry is um, a prime archaeological site and ought to be preserved. Unfortunately, I, wasn't able, I only got this information today, so that's brand new. The um, Cabal there had mentioned seven possible sites. Site four, which is a bit further upstream from um, the, the, our site, site four has already been used for an almost identical purpose. They've been taking boats out to the rigs and bringing them back, and with people on board. The site is actually owned, I believe, by Peel Holdings, who are an owner of Camel Lairs. So they own it, they've got something um, there. Sorry, you have one minute. Fine. And the, um, I have tried to buy this site off the council. I've offered a quarter of a million pounds for it. And I've not even had an acknowledgement from the executive offer, officer of that fact. Although I did email everybody else to let you know that that offer was on the table. So I think, to, I feel that the council officers here have done us absolutely no favours whatsoever. They've suppressed information. Where's the planning details for Priory Wharf and the commercial park? They don't seem to exist. We've checked at planning and we can't find them. And they're not listed in the documents. So there's something going on here and I'm extremely concerned about that. Shortly, I dare say, Camel Bears will show you some computer graphics. I caution you to ignore those computer graphics, because as an international expert on computer software, I know how easy it is to fake those results. Well done. <laughs>
we would not want to tie up that facility for 25 years as that would preclude other developments within the shipyard that we're looking at. So the two different applications. It's of note that no objections have been received from any of the statutory consultees on any planning matters. That includes English Heritage and Natural England. Application to the Marine Maritime Organisation as the authority for planning matters in the river has already been successful. And the licence permitting construction of the pontoon and Linksbound Bridge back to Alabama Way has already been issued. The proposed development is located in an area designated with a new development plan as primary industrial. And this is the main significant point about its location. When we applied for consent last year, uh, several objections were received, mainly from residents of Priory Wharf. And the application was rejected by the committee on the grounds of amenity, loss of amenity, potentially to these residences. There were no, no other grounds for rejection. We went out and looked at how we could improve the design and improve and reduce any effect on the properties. And we focused around the three points of noise, visual and disturbance. The noise has been analysed and concluded that there is no unacceptable loss of amenity for the residents. To look at the visual aspects and the disturbance, we held two um, consultations inviting all residents of Priory Wharf sending out over 130 invitations. <coughs> In the event, residents from only 11 properties at Priory Wharf attended the consultations. And of those, only eight of the properties were assessed as being in an area directly affected by the development. That is, down Alabama Way and around the corner of the frontage. We had valuable discussions and several of the points made by the residents have now been incorporated into the design before the committee. This includes windows and balcony, altering the landscaping so that new trees did not obstruct views of the river, altering the roof lights in the building. It is of note that of the eight represented properties from the development side of Priory Wharf, only five have written in with personal objections. So that is five residents out of the 48 potentially overlooking the development. At the first application that was refused last year, residences in this section of Priory Wharf <coughs> objected. There were 15 objections to the last application, but only five to this application, which I believe shows how we have improved and worked on the design to the benefit of those residences. So we believe that we've successfully taken on board the committee's comments from last year and satisfactorily addressed considered loss of amenity for the adjoining residences and that all of the planning considerations have also been properly met. We would ask you to support and approve this application. Thank you. Thank you for keeping within time. Um, the Board of Councillors here, I believe. Jean, would you like to come forward, please? <coughs>
The environmental impact of having an industrial unit built so close to the Prairie Wharf is bad enough, but coupled with the financial implications for homeowners, it really is devastating, especially for those people living on the lower levels. Although the plans have been modified somewhat, the proposed building will still have a detrimental impact on the quality of life for residents of Prairie Wharf, who I'm sure never imagined they would have to fight so hard to protect their homes and quality of life. As I said when the first application was considered, I fully support the Regeneration and Environment Directorate's business plan for 2014-16, particularly the Directorate's vision, and I, and I apologise for reiterating this. Will will be a place where businesses flourish and people will have access to good jobs, quality, affordable homes in a pleasant, safe and clean environment. This will contribute to the Council's three principles which will underpin and focus the activity of the Council. And these are local solutions, local decision, promoting independence, driving growth and aspiration. If the application is granted, it means that none of these principles apply to Prairie Wharf residents and they are just hollow words to them on a piece of uh, blank paper. It might be a local decision, but it certainly won't be a local solution for them. It won't promote independence for homeowners and it certainly won't raise their aspirations and, enable them, and to enable them to grow as they will be in negative equity and unable to move elsewhere. Thank you for listening and I would urge you to support the residents of Pride Wharf and reject this application. Thank you, uh, I understand that we also have uh, the Heritage Champion um, here who would like to speak, so would you like to come forward? And if you can state your name and uh, you have five minutes. Council Chairman is um, Heritage Champion with a bit of background, 45 years knowledge in local history as well. Uh, right, um, as Heritage uh, Champion, I'm dismayed to find this application back here again. The application is basically the same as before with a few small changes to the three planning procedures. On the Mersey waterfront, amongst ferries of major historical importance, the site is so important historically and visually. visually that in the 1840s, a site in Dremoyne, Sydney was named Birkenhead Point after this area. To this very day, a large building has the name Birkenhead Point, which can be seen right across uh, Sydney, seen for miles. It's a very prominent area, and there's actually a tram street nearby too. Tourism is the most, there is no mention tonight of the uh, importance of, uh, of tourism. Tourism, tourism uh, income is the number one uh, income uh, in the uh, uh, Wirral, uh, sorry, Merseyside economy at this moment in time. And of all that tonight, no one has even mentioned the, the, the income, the importance of tourism to uh, Merseyside. So it's the most important money earner, money earner in the Merseyside economy, and the income is continually increasing. Heritage tourism is a major part of that, and this will seriously damage the heritage environment. The thought of an industrial shed blighting this exceptional site, which is included in all Mersey Ferry River tours, and from the lines to fills myself and local heritage groups with horror. Why on earth, after years and years of refining the Merseyside tourism product, why would anyone want to blight the waterfront of this monstrosity? Wirral has invested in highlighting and developing the ancient Birkenhead Priory site. This development is far too near. Please remember the best views of the local waterfront are from St Mary's Church Tower, uh, Birkenhead Priory, which is visited by large numbers of visitors every year. At the last planning meeting on this application, not enough was mentioned about the importance of this site. Here we have this year another major tourism heritage event QR connections with the early area, a number of three lines attending. Why on earth would we want to desecrate this site? I've also, as the gentleman mentioned previously, I've also been concerned as heritage champion about certain observations by English heritage. I am so concerned that I've asked for a meeting with the regional director of uh, North West to discuss this issue and a number of decisions and opinions that are seen by myself and others. Uh, our world heritage groups to be damaging to real heritage. Thank you. Okay, um, there was um, a bit of a conflict between what 
two people said there regarding uh, the refusal. Uh, and what I'd like Matthew to do is just clarify that it was refused, uh, the previous application was refused on the grounds of EM6. Can I just ask you to clarify on what grounds? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, the, the application, the previous application was refused uh, on the grounds of policy EM6 having regard to the potential impacts to the residential um, properties at Priory Wharf only. Um, that was specifically cited in the reason for refusal. Thank you. Um, I'll just open this up to the committee then. Any comments or observations? Thank you, Chair. Um, would you just take up on the last point that Matthew mentioned, that um, the grants for refusal last time, the uh, impact on the immunity of the private wharf. I mean, that is true. <coughs> I suspect it wasn't the only factor that the committee was taking into account when uh, it voted to, uh, to refuse the earlier application. Um, when Mr. Wood spoke uh, very well, he spoke too, he, he said it was vital to support appropriate uh, development, and, and I think that's very true. But there's a lot of aspects about this which I feel are questionable or inappropriate. Uh, just a couple of things I'd like to draw on from what we heard previously. First of all, the, when we heard the previous uh, report, the officer's report, you, you would almost feel that this site has very low immediacy value. Um, I don't think that's, that's true at all. I think a lot of people access this area. If you read the report, it includes disabled people, anglers, uh, pleasure boats, um, and I think we're all concerned about inequalities across the borough, it's something we all talk about a lot. And if you consider the, act, the access to open areas in that part of Birkenhead, this is very unique in that respect. And I don't think we should be closing off uh, access to important areas of immunity for the local population. I think we, it's important to consider the health, uh, the health benefits that accrue from that. Um, I think the issue that was raised earlier about the access to the slipway, I think that's a very pertinent issue that for many hundreds of years people have been using this, um, this point to access uh, the riverbank and I would question the, the legal status of that. I think in, under common law there must be at least a question mark over whether we have the right to block off public access to that slipway. Um, the heritage and tourism aspects are very, very important. I think the, the link between Burton and Priory, Monks Ferry, and the wider heritage of uh, Woodside and Hamilton Square is an underused asset that has significant potential, which would be undermined if, if this application uh, goes ahead. And just finally, I'm concerned about the, the size of the, the facility relative to the area concerned. It's a relatively uh, compact area. And if um, it certainly is I hope, and, and we can reasonably expect that the uh, you know the wind energy industry continues to expand, I think there's a question mark as to whether that facility will have sufficient capacity for the longer term. And I was quite pleased to see in the report, you know, there was analysis of the various other options that were available to uh, locate this facility. I found that quite instructive, and I wasn't entirely um, convinced when we read the officer's report. I would refer members specifically to page 104 that deals with the Bromper Pool and Bromper. And in that it says that a known M facility is considered to conflict with the shipping channel for Eastern Dock and the Manchester Ship Canal. Existing commercial uh, vessel movements at this location would be considerably greater than other locations downstream. Now that doesn't strike me as an overwhelming leap of insurmountable obstacle to uh, locating such a facility as this in that location. I think there are other options and I think it came up in the previous application that the feeling was that whatever happens with this application, the wind farm facilities etc. will be serviced from somewhere and, and my feeling is that there are other alternatives that they don't Thank you, Chair. And just a, just a, a couple of quick points, really. Um, I think when the applicants spoke before, they mentioned about um, the, the the sort of the limited 
opposition almost from, from the residents of Priory Wharf? Well, I think firstly, I, I don't believe that to be the case, but also secondly, um, I think it works both ways. Um, to say that there was only sort of a limited amount of people impacted by it is also, I think that we take into consideration that the petition of nearly 700 people that you had in favour, how many of those were, were directly impacted? Um, on, by this um, this proposal, um, and, and I can't accept that you didn't write to the 130 households because you didn't believe that they were impacted in some way. To then narrow that number down in, in your analysis, I I, I don't think is fair. But in terms of, of the sort of the application itself, last time um, I, I voted against this. Um, because I wasn't happy with the impact it had had on the immunity of those residents who, who live in Priory Wharf. I'm still not happy with that. Um, I don't think the changes that have been put forward sufficiently address the concerns that were raised by the residents. So, um, just thought I'd admit that. Dave. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, I think we've got to look back at this and decide just what we can and cannot do. First of all, this application has been made. We cannot start recommending that it might be somewhere else, as much as that might be desirable. We have to look at this particular application on its merits and decide whether it is a suitable solution for this area. Bearing in mind, we're talking about an area which is designated for industrial use. It's not designated for residential use. And of course, this was the problem that we inherited when MDC, Metastite Development Corporation, in its wisdom, decided to delegate the flats as a residential area. That would have been totally at conflict with our own um, urban, development, uh, urban development plan. Having said that, there's just two things I'd really like to comment upon. One, these people who are in the flats, I wouldn't want to live there if this was going to be built next door. That's my first statement, quite clearly. But from a planning perspective, from planning legislation, they are not unfortunately entitled to a view, and the fact that they're going to lose it is not something that we can talk about. Um, I haven't yet seen, and I think we ought to see it, what these buildings look like in plan, and what they look like in elevation as the new design, because we need to see what these look like in terms of what the outlook might be. Nobody's asked that question yet, and I'm very, very surprised they haven't. Have we got some drawings available that we can see just what we're looking at? Uh, I think while that's being put on, we do have to be very careful. Uh, I'm very unhappy about this development, no question about that. But I do not necessarily believe that something of this type, low profile, not major um, manufacturing facility, but a service facility for the wind farms, as has been stated, whether we could produce reasons that would be sustainable at appeal under planning legislation that would not mean that we'd not just turn this down as a matter of course tonight and then be stuck with the fact that an appeal would immediately overturn it. I'm not saying that is the reason why we shouldn't refuse it. I'm saying it's something that we need to consider before we start voting in favour of refusal. So, first of all, can we just have a quick look and can you just talk us through what is being proposed and the height of what is being proposed relative to the residential developments next door. Thank you, through you, Chair. Uh, so, so this is the site at the moment. It's currently in two car parks. The site um, slopes down from Alabama Way um, towards the river. Um, so there's an existing car park here at a higher level and another one here at a lower level. Um, the proposal is to site um, the, the building here with car parking around the perimeter. The office part of the building um, would be here and the warehouse um, um, at the back. Um, as, as I alluded to in, in my presentation, this is not heavy industry. Um, it's, it's warehousing um, with, with some small um, processes and, and office, uh, which, uh, which as I said, uh, would take place here. Um, in terms of um, what, what the building will look like, So this is the elevation, the north facing elevation, so this is the office space here 
and then this is the um, uh, the warehouse facility. Um, these windows here, as I said in my presentation, they're non-light emitting, um, so you wouldn't get any light coming through those um, through those windows. And they've been put in place really to break up the starkness of the elevation, as was previously um, proposed. And the balcony, um, it's like a Juliet balcony really, it's a feature rather than um, being able to, to access um, the balcony so there wouldn't be any people um, walking on it. So that's the north facing elevation. Um, and then this is, this is the, other, the, uh, the other part, so there's a return here. Um, again, that would be non-light emitting um, <coughs> um, windows. And as I said in the presentation, there would be um, increased vegetation with what we're, we're describing as this living wall, um, where um, you would have uh, evergreen <coughs> plants growing up the elevation um, to provide um, a, a buffer, as it were, um, to the starkness of, of, of the elevation. The gables remain as previously proposed, but the ridge height has been lowered. Um, um, to what was previously uh, uh, proposed. Uh, I do have some um, well, this is, this is um, looking down across the site. Primary Wharf is a four story building um, and we acknowledge that the impact of this development is likely to be more impactful on, the, um, on those apartments that are on the ground floor and the first floor. Um, and then as you get to the second, uh, the second and third floor, um, that impact becomes a, a, a lot less um, apparent. So this is taken, um, and I think it is important to say that Priory Wharf is already set higher than the application site. So it is at a higher level than the application site. So those apartments would look down on the site and across the building. So this is a view that's taken across um, from Priory Wharf. Um, and then this is um, looking up from the river front um, towards the north western, uh, yeah, northwestern, northeastern corner of the of the site. So that's looking up from the river front. And then Third one is uh, that's as you come down to the site from the uh, the access at other level way. So that gives an impression of, of what the building will look like. Uh, just uh, two other very quick questions. Have you got a section that shows the height of this building? Uh, but what is the height of the building? That's the first question. The second question is: Do you have a section which shows this building relative to the residential properties to see what height it is relative to the to the height? Of the apartment block. I don't know whether it has. I just need to know the height of it relative to the apartment block. You may not have that information. I took the trouble to go down to the site yesterday and spent about an hour looking around mm -hmm. very important and something that I took on my own behalf. So uh, my concern is I will just once more, is that if we do refuse this, we have to refuse it for reasons that would be sustainable as a deal. Bearing in mind it is an industrial area, views can't be taken account of, and to me that building looks nowhere near as bad as I had it originally in my With that, I will finish. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, um, as I raised the question, I think last time uh, this this was here, um, having heard the uh, presentation from LDRA um, in objection last time, again um, similar uh, presentation. Was that I distinctly remember asking about um, EM6 and the effect on neighbouring businesses. And Pat Cleary is quite right, but it, it was certainly a matter that we. Uh, in my mind when considering it in the round. Clearly there is a, an impact on, on the residents and that's reflected in the original reason for refusal. But there's also an impact on neighbouring businesses and you know if, if, if we're considering this on the grounds of all going to get so many jobs, well it's also going to be balanced against uh, jobs that might potentially be 
lost the resource. Now, I don't recall why um, the effect on neighbouring businesses didn't make it into the final um, reason for refusal, um, but it was certainly uh, for, for, for clarity um, a matter that weighed on my mind then, um, as, it, as, it still do, as it still does uh, now. Uh, I know from the report, you know, there's a clear then, uh, anyway, presumably it's, it's on hold, this is a fashion application, and it's certainly the case, isn't it, that when an appeal is heard, then everything's to be like off the table and the inspector will take a, a new view um, as to all of the policies that have been considered and whether he feels any of the policies have been, if you like, reached, uh, including impact on residents and impact on uh, neighbouring businesses. Okay, Dennis. Thank you, Chair. Um, I mean, I agree with what Matt was saying before. The changes that have come forward now, I really do believe that it's going to change the development to north. Um, we're talking, it's a 16 metre high, 50 foot high development. So to say it's not going to affect them properties, it's mm -hmm. going to affect the properties. Of course, it is. there's 130 properties there. Um, um, you know, to me, removing seven roof lights and pedestrian door and an elevation of some glass and an evergreen screen doesn't really, you know, just doesn't seem to be enough for me. And I mean, I refused this last time, and I think I'm going to move <coughs> refusal tonight on the same ground chair. That the yeah. Just before you do, um, you'd like to make a clarification over something. Okay. Yeah. Through you, Chair, um, I think it is important to make the point that it isn't just the physical changes that have been made into this application. A lot of the supporting information um, that has been provided with this application, it goes into a lot more detail, a lot more assessment has been made this time around about noise impact and noise disturbance and all those sorts of issues. These are the things that we would have to defend if we refuse this application at an appeal. So this time around, that information is a lot stronger and the assessments that have been made as part of this application um, provide a lot more detail than were previously considered with the one that was refused. Chair, I still wish to you know, move reviews along this because to me, I know it says here about the environment and um, they have no objection. Now, I'm not being funny, Chair, but this, this isn't up yet. This isn't in work and this isn't, you know, a manufacturing at all, so until it actually is, you don't know what the <coughs> impact is going to be on, on the residents. Just to be clear, it's not a manufacturing use. Well, I'm not being really funny, this is a tidal, you know, we're talking chips coming in. It could be one, two, and three o'clock in the morning. You can't tell me that there's not going to be any noise from any of this. I'm not, sorry, just to come back on that point, um, all of that has been, uh, has been assessed in the noise assessment. Um, and those, those are detailed on the late list for you. Um, but just to be very clear, it's not a manufacturing use. It's a warehouse and office facility, not manufacturing. Mm. Still wishing to move a few And the proposed development by reason of its siting is considered would result in unacceptable loss of amenity for the occupiers of residential development priority war by virtue of increased noise, general disturbance and a poor outlook. And this is policy EM6. The proposed development, if approved, will be contrary to policy EM6 of the unitary development plan. Thank you, Chair. Okay, we've had some movement to refuse. Do we have a second to I'll second that. Thank you, Chair. Before we move to the vote, I mean, I appreciate that that's probably a, a, a repeat of what was last time. But it weighs in my mind the fact that there is a business also affected. And, and um, so it weighs that last time. I don't know why it didn't make it into the reasons for refusal last time. I assume I might be advised that I can't just add a few things in the plan in the refusal even though they might have been considered last time. The minutes aren't detailed enough, are they? If you like to give a pop for, for, that, for comments that were made by members, even though we have the benefits of Mr. Places, um, YouTube's 
uh, to be able to double check what was said in the tone of the debate and, and the matters that, and matters that were raised. What we end up with is a reason for refusal that might not entirely represent every view that was put on the table. Now that might have been something we will advise on. <coughs> Sorry, the solicitors just going to come back on that. The, the reason we the refusal for the client's previous application was what was moved as the reason for the refusal. That, that was the situation we have. Okay, to go back to where we were, um, Denise, as we move to refusal, do we have a second second? Jo Walsh is there. Okay, can we go to the vote to refuse this application, please? All the, sorry, all those in favour of refusal? And against? So that's refused. that was just here for that item that would like to leave that. We'll just give you a couple of minutes to...